Hey guys, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a glorious day, hallelujah. I'm so thankful. Man, I'm telling you, I'm just meditating on the word this morning. Glory to God. Mm. You know what? I wish people would really grab a hold of the importance of the word. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And, uh, oh man, the word is just alive in me right now. And um, glory to God. Wow, the life, the life that the Lord Jesus and our Heavenly Father wants us to live is so far above what we're experiencing. Amen. I mean, I'm looking at myself, you know, and I'm like, you know, life is good. Amen. But as I meditate on the word this morning, I see there is so much more. Glory to God. As a matter of fact, you know, Jesus said, marvel not at the things I do, for you shall do greater things than I, because I go to the Father. Amen. So unless I'm seeing the life of Christ manifest in me, uh, you know what? I've not entered into all that he has for us. Amen. I think every one of us can say that we have not experienced the life that Jesus lived. Amen. Well, I mean, I may experience it sometimes. Amen. I may experience miracles sometimes, but I mean to walk like Jesus walked. I mean, that is living. Amen. Glory to God. And, uh, Wow, I've just got so much. You know, in uh, Romans 10, it says, now this is so important, and, and it's a scripture that we all know, but let's look at it in a different light today, amen? It says in Romans 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed or, or disappointed okay so what we have to realize is we first have to believe it in our heart okay um our mouth speaks what our heart believes amen it's not the opposite we don't confess so that we believe no, Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, okay? So, I mean, that's how we come uh, into salvation. That's how we receive salvation. We are, we are persuaded of the gospel, and then we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. So our mouth makes the confession of what our heart believes, amen? And the same way that we believe the word of God concerning salvation uh, to be born again is the same way we, we receive all the promises of God. Amen. You know, uh, Paul says, as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, so walk ye in him. So it's the same way with everything, whether it's healing, prosperity, um, strength in our physical body in our mental state the word the word of god is the seed and when we plant the word of god in our heart and keep listening to the word that god is speaking about us it brings forth fruit in our lives amen you know paul said in second corinthians 4:13 we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written see it was this was written in the psalms he's saying listen we have the same spirit of faith as that one that uh wrote it in the psalms i believe therefore i have spoken we also believe and therefore we speak do you know we speak what we believe whether it's good or bad that's what we're going to speak, amen? Out of the abundance of the heart, the man's, 
the mouth speaks. Jesus said in Luke 6.45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, which is just a man that is filled with toil and labor, a person that believes they are what they do, not a person that believes they are who God says they are. An evil man or a man full of labors out of the evil treasure in, heart, in his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So whatever we are believing in our heart is what's going to come out of our mouth. And we cannot expect good stuff to come out of our heart when we are facing a contradictory circumstance unless we've been feeding on the word of life and our heart is full of the word of life because you know what ministry is an overflow it's when your cup's running over amen it's spilling over and you can't help but share what is in your heart hallelujah look at this scripture here i mean you know what the word can either be alive or it can be dead. It's all in how you look at it, okay? And as I read this, it's just life to me. In Romans 4, it's talking about Abraham. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, who brings to life the dead calleth those things which are not as though they were. God speaks of things that are not as though they were. Oh my goodness, you know, the scripture comes to my mind in Mark um, 11, 20. He says, when you stand praying, believe that you have received the things that you asked for and you shall have them. In other words, you've got to realize they're already yours before you can see the manifestation of it. It says, who against hope believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. That word faith is all it is, is persuasion. He wasn't weak in being persuaded by what God had said to him. He considered not his own body. This is so glorious if we can grab a hold of this for our own life. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Listen, I don't care what it is, what promise of God it is. If we will allow God's word to dwell richly in our heart, amen, that our heart is fully persuaded that God is not a man, that he should lie, but he will do what he promised if we can just hook our little red wagon to that word, it'll bring to pass what God has said in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God has got to be bigger in our hearts than contradictory circumstances. You hear that? The word of God has got to be bigger in our heart than contradictory circumstances. Amen. Just like... Abraham. The contradictory circumstance was he was old, his wife's womb was dead. They were the contradictory circumstances. But he had believed a word. His heart was persuaded by the word that God spoke to him that said, I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I see. God has said and therefore I believe it. You know, in uh, Romans 8, this is so good. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, that no condemnation, 
what that is saying is the scripture tells us in John 3 that Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world but that the world may be saved through him he that believeth it will not enter into condemnation he that believeth not is condemned already you've got to understand something Jesus came into a world that was condemned condemned to what condemned to a life of knowing themselves after the flesh they were condemned to a life of not knowing themselves according to God's good view and opinion of them there was a veil over their heart that they could not see but he says he that believe will not enter into condemnation so here this scripture is saying there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but after the spirit what he's saying is listen you will not live a life condemned to this world system if you continue to walk in the spirit or to walk in the belief of what God has said to you through Jesus Christ okay if you walk after the flesh which means to just walk as Adam walked in an unrenewed mind you are going to experience the limitations of the carnal man but you can supersede the carnal man and live a heavenly life when you believe the Word of God it says for the law of the Spirit now you know that law it's a vital principle but it also means uh, to dole out food as in grazing okay stop and think about it there's a food that the Spirit supplies that causes us to live a life that is free from the law of sin and death the law of limitation oh you can't do that you're just human no Jesus came to give us a superhuman life amen we can live a life of abundance we can live a life of victory we can live a life of uh, going against contradictory circumstances amen but you know what what is our heart filled up for out of the abundance of the heart our mouths speak amen you know it reminds me a couple of um, it was a few weeks ago now when I had my my fall on my bike ride you know when I fell and I bent my arm backwards I felt pain in my body but my reaction to the fall was not to agree with what I felt but to agree with what God says that by his stripes I'm healed amen you know you got to realize something we were created in the image of God and God by the word of his mouth created all things amen the scripture tells us in Hebrews 11 by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God amen and you know what the scripture tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue and the enemy wants us to agree with the contradictory circumstances and confess with our mouth the opposite to what we want and unless our heart is filled with God's faith what God is persuaded of uh, we're gonna speak contradictory things amen hallelujah you know um, in when I first got saved back in 1977 this was one of my favorite scriptures and I, I the Lord just showed me the power of his word in Proverbs 420 it says my son attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it 
are the issues of life or the streams of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, a distorted or a crooked mouth, and perverse lips. Turn aside. Perverse lips put far from thee. Listen, you can't change your lips by trying to change your lips. You know, James in chapter 3 says that the tongue no man can tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Listen, you can't ch change the way you speak without changing the heart because the mouth speaks out of the abundance of the heart. And you know, that's where the word of faith got it wrong. Where they were saying, you know, you, you need to confess the right thing. Say the right thing. No, what we need to do is believe the right thing. And when you believe the right thing, your mouth is going to line up with it. Amen. And so we put away a frogwood tongue by filling our heart with the good word of God. And then out of the abundance of this good word of God in our heart, our mouth is going to speak good Amen. things. Amen. In Proverbs 22, 17, it says, Bow thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thy heart unto knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted to thy lips. The Amplified says, Lips will be accustomed to confessing them. You see that? By filling our heart with the right thing, our mouth will line up with what God is saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, that is just so good. You know, David's heart was filled with the Word of God. And he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That word follow is very weak. It should be. It's going to hunt me down. The goodness of God is going to hunt me down and take me over. That's what he believed. And that's what he said. Amen. And you know, the scripture tells us in Romans 12, 21, Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. When contradictory circumstances come against us, we are going to react to those contradictory circumstances. We're either going to agree with them or we're going to contradict them. It all depends what we've been feeding on. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, in, in Philemon 6, it says, Let the communication of thy faith that the communication of thy faith may become effectual or powerful by the acknowledge of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You know, as I was meditating on that this morning, that word communion is koinonia, or fellowship, okay? Stop and think about this. That the communication or the fellowship of your faith may become effectual as you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Do you know we are communicating or having fellowship with the faith, with the persuasion that is in our heart? We are fully persuaded of what God has put in us in Christ Jesus every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus and you know what not only are we communicating with the faith that is in us in Christ Jesus but we're giving it out we're having fellowship with Christ in our heart and then we are communicating that faith which is in our hearts to all those that God brings in our way. Isn't that glorious? You can communicate or you can distribute that goodness that is in your heart by faith to all of those that you come in, into contact with. Oh my goodness, you know the scripture says in Proverbs 15, 28 that the heart 
of the righteous studieth to answer. I love that scripture. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. It's in search mode. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things, you know. That's just a person that doesn't know who they are in Christ Jesus. But when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, <laughs> you study to answer. You stop and you contemplate your words. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, in Proverbs 16, 23, I'm already here, so i got to wrap it up. It says, the heart of the wise teacheth his mouth. Wow. The heart of the wise person teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to their bones. Glory to God. A, a, a wise person Take your time. Got studies, of time. studies what he is saying. Amen. And just doesn't answer frivolously. You know, in 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion on one another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. But contrariwise, blessing. Knowing that ye are thereto, thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips, that they speak no guile. Listen, when you're feeding on the good word of the Lord, you can't help but speak good things. The, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So let's fill our heart with the good word of God today that our mouths will reflect what is in our heart. You know, David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God. Amen. You know what? It pleases the Lord for us to say the same thing with him. Amen. Where, where it says, confess your sins one uh, uh, toward another. You know, say the same thing that God says. What does God say about our sins? He's cast our sins as far as the east is from the west, thrown them in the sea of forgetfulness, and he remembers no, them no more. So neither do I. Amen. I'm as righteous as the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I am destined to a life of victory in him. Well, God bless you and have an awesome day.